very important facts about leopards in Sri Lanka. And we hope that by the end of this session, you will educate yourself about the Sri Lankan leopards. To facilitate these goals, we have joined with us with our special guest, Mrs. Setil Mohandiram. Mrs. Setil, welcome on board. Mrs. Setil, Mrs. Setil is, a is a wildlife researcher, a conservationist, and also the executive director of Leprechaun Sri Lanka. For starters, please mute yourself at all times. For the benefit of our guests, Mrs. Setil, who may not be familiar with your work. Please give us an overview of your background, from a career, as well as your experience, your academic, and your interests. Like, how have you become the person who you are today? Right. Uh, so, Nadisha, first and foremost, uh, I would like to thank you all for inviting me for the webinar on the outcome of one final uh, video. So, myself, uh, myself, myself, and I am a separate director of the Lepagon Sri Lanka as well as I am research and so we do it as well as I said. When I come to my email, I work as a researcher and as well as a wildlife researcher uh, for the movie. And then again, I did my A-levels in the Sri College of uh, Then I graduated uh, my, uh, my education. Uh, from, I had a diploma from Ecology uh, from the Rice University as well as the life management in the Open University of I had uh, my education uh, in the Julian School as well. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Mrs. Satir. It very is very fascinating and inspirational to see the path you have taken that has led to this point in time. So, can you tell the audience, and uh, of course, I'm very curious to know what was the catalyst that drives you to become like to get into this wildlife research, this interesting field of yours? Yes. So basically, uh, wildlife interest and uh, kind of a passion. We have to have the passion, courage, and have the basic experience about animals and their behaviors, how nature works. Uh, so basically, we all are part of nature and uh, we should be honored and we should thank our nature to be part of it, to live with it as, as well as. Respect it as well. All right. So um, I'm very excited to get to know these interesting unknown facts about Sri Lankan leopards. Now it's over to you, Mrs. Setil, to enlighten and educate our audience who are very keen to know these amazing facts about Sri Lankan leopards. All right. Uh, thank you, Nadisha. Okay. So Sri Lankan leopard. Uh, is the apex predator of the country. Uh, apex predator, as in it's the top predator. Uh, it doesn't have a competition. Uh, it's the ultimate killing machine in the wild itself. But then again, when it comes to the... Yeah, sure. Uh, when it comes to the humans, uh, as well as with other animals, it's very solitary yeah, as, as well. well. As well. I even see... Uh, uh, so why do we... Sorry to interrupt, like, how solitary are a leopard Leopard solitary yeah. as in you can't own a leopard. You can pet a cat, you can pet a dog, you can pet a dog, but then again, uh, leopard, leopard, leopard is the king of his own. Uh, leopard, leopard is master of, of itself, and, and he is master of, of hunting. He is the top predator, so he is kind of a, he is the top on the top. Right. He's a king. Okay. So without further ado. Uh, let us move on to the leopards, but then again, before that, uh, I would uh, like to tell something about the Leprechaun Sri Lanka, which is the organization I'm on behalf of today. Uh, Leprechaun Sri Lanka is a uh, conservation organization to protect, exclusive, protect as well as leopard. And we do carry out research programs as well as the data. Uh, then again, we work with numerous uh, organizations, including 
conservation as well as the community organizations to raise awareness about the Sri Lankan leopards and their behaviors. Also, we work to mitigate the human leopard conflict in the country. And then again, we carry out numerous training programs, including field work, uh, field, field visits, field work, as well as uh, we take out foreign students into us to do uh, the research work as well. And then again, we have another program called volunteer program, the Leprechaun volunteer program. Uh, so what we do is that we educate the volunteers about the nature, about the environmental aspects. So basically, we are more than a conservation organization, a typical conservation organization devoted to leopard, but then again, we do overall things as well. So that's us. Uh, Mrs. Sachil, a quick question before, uh, before we jump into the presentation. Like you mentioned, Leopard from Sri Lanka is a non profit organization. So I'm quite curious to know how do the organization get funding to proceed? Yes, Adisha. So basically, Non-profit means we doesn't keep any money or we doesn't get any salary. But then again, we put the donations or funding. We are getting. We are putting into the Kerala leopard country itself. We do carry out the program. There are expenses as well. We have cameras and the materials. So we have foreign and local donors to us. They do donate us, and uh, we are putting their donations to us with the amount of the leopard, like I said. All right, Mr. Satil, thank you so much. So we can uh, jump into the presentation. So, Nadisha, uh, English County of Sri Lanka is a Cantonese language, uh, especially when it comes to the Singhalese language, as well as Cantonese. We have a institution of the leopard, the name of the leopard. Before that, it came from Latin. It's a combination of two words called Yo and Yo. So, the leopard word, instead of one word, Greek meaning is the leopard or the male panther. So, originally, the word leopard is derived from Greek. Yes, yes, exactly. And on behalf of the science, when it comes to the scientific manner, we have a scientific name to address all leopard subspecies. It's a common name called Panthera pardus. And when it comes to the uh, synonymous names or the Singhalese or the Tamil names, we have two confusions when it comes to the singular language. One we have is we say Divya or the Kotia. But then again, just to keep in your touch, the Kotia is the right word to address the leopard. In my opinion, all leopard name. Our leopard or the leopard is the right name. Pandra Paras Kot, the Kotia name, generic name, is a long name, and they came from the past by generation to generation. And then again, when you come to the Tamil, you have the word for the leopard, for the central island, as well as the northern name. And when you come to the world itself, people address the leopard, spotted leopard, or the common leopard, but then again, for our use, we will use leopard in behalf of the Sri Lanka leopard as well throughout the presentation. All right. I we can proceed. Sure, sure. So, so uh, the Sri Lanka uh, leopard, like I said, uh, Sri Lanka leopard or the Panthera pardus cotia uh, is the apex predator, the top predator. Uh, but then again, when it comes to the top predator, it has its own competitors. Like there are few. We will be talking about them in coming slides as well. Uh, and like I said, uh, to be top, you have to have the skills. Like you, you have your skills. Like I have my own skills. Yeah. Like that, I feel to say why a certain animal has to have his own skills. And the leopard itself has the top skills to hunt, to survive, as well as to compete. And uh, speaking about the scientific name for the Sri Lankan leopard, like I said, it's, a, it's, uh, it's called Panthera pardus cotia. And uh, when we are moving about the common leopard species, we have eight leopard subspecies in the world. And uh, now speaking about the origin of the leopard, uh, they emerged around like 55 million years ago. The first reported ancestor for leopards or the modern felines came from the Asia itself. Then we have the modern felines. Modern felines, as in you have leopards, you have tigers, you have lions, 
pumas, cheetahs, and every feline that we are looking at today is called modern feline group. And these modern felines emerged uh, around 10 to 11 million years ago, and they, they share a common ancestor as well. Then you have the lions and leopards, the subspecies that we are looking in so many countries. They emerged two to three million years ago, and now we have eight leopard subspecies in the world in six geographical landscapes. So, uh, Nadisha, when moving to the subspecies, we, previously we had nine leopard subspecies in the world, but mm, thanks to a renowned leopard conservationist as well as a research scientist, she is a Sri Lankan actually, and we are so proud about her. She came up with a research and she solved the problem that we only have eight leopard subspecies based on uh, DNA analysis. We'll be speaking about in coming slide as well. But however, at the moment we have the African leopard, we have the Persian leopard, we have the Arabian leopard, we have the Indian leopard, we have the Indo-Chinese leopard, as well as the Amur, and we have the Javan leopard as well. Just a quick disruption. So we categorize leopards into like several species. Leopard. So, how do we actually, like, if I see, if you show me two leopards, I would be able to differentiate them. So, come to the leopard species, they have different characteristics as well as different color variations and the rosette. When we are moving to the Indian leopard, he has wider rosettes or the spots larger than our leopard. And when we are moving to the armored leopard, it has a thick coat because it lives in near to the eastern Russia, far east Russia, and it survives in snow territories. And when you are moving into the Javan leopard, Javan leopards are island leopards just like us. And uh, they survive in a thick forest or a thick canopy so that they have a darker skin. Like that, when you are moving to the world, when you are traveling around, if you see a leopard, you can see certain unique patterns or the characteristics of their own. So that's how we differ these subspecies one from another. All right, Mr. Sethi, uh, yeah, we can sure. go on. And uh, just to be clear, when, when we are speaking about the nine leopard subspecies that we previously had, we had the confusion in between the Amur leopard and the North Chinese leopard. But mm, based on Dr. Shriani Mittapala's research, she's the, the researcher, she's, she's from Sri Lanka, and she conducted her research and she solved the problem in between Amur leopard and the North Chinese leopard, said that they share same DNA and then again there will be no confusion, they all are the same. So the IUC and CAT committee proposed to remove the North Chinese leopard and they put it into the Amur leopard category. So then we have now, now at the moment, we have only eight leopard subspecies. All right. That's very interesting, actually. I, the interesting part is, Nadisha, that Dr. Sjani Mitrapara uh, used molecular genetic variation uh, studies to identify these eight subspecies. So we should thank we should thank her to about the recognition of these eight subspecies at the moment. So uh, now, now we have eight leopard subspecies. If you are moving to your screen, you can see the eight leopard subspecies. The confirmed leopard leopard subspecies, subspecies in the world. From top to bottom, you have the African, the Indian leopard, the German leopard, the Arabian leopard, the Persian leopard, the Amur leopard, the Indo Chinese, as well as our very own, the Sri Lankan leopard. And Nadisha, today's topic is the Sri Lankan leopard. So, the Sri Lankan leopard has its own characteristics. A very, a very unique, unique animal, animal as, as a unique behavior. So, so to be known, the Sri Lankan leopard is native or to endemic to us. It's endemic to Sri Lanka. It lives in Sri Lanka only. And it shares so many landscapes around the island. And when, when you are speaking about the characteristics, the physical characteristics of the leopard is it has a tawny or rusty yellow coat. Or when you are moving into Singharajo or to the central highlands, you can see leopard has a thick as well as a darkish skin because that brings their weather condition or the climate condition that they are living. Uh, just a little interruption, like how do they change their fur? How do the color differ? 
yellowish thorny background not the darkish one but when you are looking at the counterpart of singaraja as well as in the central highlands you have the darkish color for as well and they have they are protected what we call it this spot we call it in a scientific manner is the process all right yes and what interesting is that in sri lankan leopard have other color variations as well that we call them as black leopard or the panthers it's a genetic Uh, variation we call it the melanism and these melanistic forms been observed in the island the if you are if i am bringing your memory back uh, you can remember last year or in 2022 uh, 20 uh, 2020 we had a certain movement that we captured a leopard that has a black skin from nallathaniya yes yes and dye so these are the melanistic forms that we been looking for uh, they are very rare because it's a very rare genetic mutation so we only have few remaining in the wild at the moment and like i said it's a apex predator and like i said to be apex you have to be better if you are not better there are no chance to be survived in the wild self so sri lanka leopard has their own scales we will be talking about in coming slides and uh, historically it used to occur in numerous landscapes even they lived in the western province when you are moving into the 17th or 18th century we have report that claiming the leopards being reported from kalambu area from the kalambu district itself but now unfortunately we don't have much of the population they are cornered to few districts as well as to the few provinces so and by the time pass there will be so many interruptions for the leopard populations to be coming and we have to be prepared for what we are doing as a conservationist and when it comes to sri lanka leopard they rarely take their prey into the trees because they have less competition uh, but when you are moving to the africa or to the india they have a huge competition for the prey types when you are moving to the africa you have cheetahs you have lions you have hyenas and like that. when you are moving into the india you have lion as well as the tigers so the both african and indian leopards they have their own competition but for sri lanka he is the top he is on, on the top, top of the food chain and does have much of the country so he is on their the ground so uh, mr sir uh, another question i'm curious to know like uh, the iq levels of animals when it comes to a leopard what sort of a iq level like uh, how does it differentiate from a lion Yes, Adisha lion is kind of a very lazy animal. When you are looking at the male lion, all he does is sleep. He only engages to protect his herd. But but the myth here is lion is the kingdom of yes. the forest. So, so now, now let's, let's get, get to this very interesting point. Yeah, this story changes. Yeah. So where the story changes is that actually there is a king. He does everything on his own. He hunts for himself. when it come to the leopardess or the mother leopard uh, she does everything to protect her cub or her cubs and when it come to the territorial fight they are the ferocious they are very furious and when it come to the lions uh, lions are different category uh, the lioness are the hunt of the pack the whole lion does is sleeping and leopards are very cunning they are like few steps ahead of leopard it always does when it come to the african landscapes it always a game changer for other animals because like leopard are, leopards are quick leopards are faster than the lions and lions have the thick fluffy bodies and the agility of the leopard is a massive it is kind of a very mesmerizing movement for everyone when you are looking at a leopard in the wild they are very quick they are running here and there they are jumping they do everything to take to take their counterpart they do that but hmm, when you all do 
That's all right, Mr. Kapil. You can take your time and uh, uh, are we good to go? Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Uh, you all right. All right. So, uh, when, it move, when, when you are speaking about the territories, uh, leopard is a highly, highly territorial. Territory means you have the, your own garden, you have your own home. Same for the animals as well, same for the leopards. When it comes to the leopards, they have a huge territory from 17 to 18 square kilometers. But when it comes to the Yale, block one, or when it comes to the central highlands, you have these cases where leopards do overlap their own territories. Like in a territory itself, there are, there is one male dominant male leopard and few females. That's the common case. But when it comes to the Yala block one, you have these very interesting cases where two dominant male leopards overlap their own territories because of the space. In Yala block one itself, where the world called the, the Yala carries the world highest leopard density in the world. We have that number. So we are so actually, we are actually uh, village, village, yes. uh, to When you are moving into the Yala, uh, uh, there are 100% of chance, of chance that we are looking at a leopard. It's a very certain case. And when, when you are speaking about the Yala itself, you have around like 100 to 130 leopards living in block one itself at the moment. So it carries the world highest leopard density uh, in a national park. And we are so proud about it. We like we have so many treasures we'll be talking about in later in series as well. And like I said, these territories overlap and sometimes they do fight for their territories and it end up in some I mean, in catastrophes as well. Catastrophes as well. So uh, I'm a bit concerned now since we say like uh, that in the that area, area yeah. the density and the volume of the leopards are quite, quite high. So, so, so even for prey, it's about competition. So, uh, could you elaborate, could you elaborate a bit more about, about, the, about, the, about your experiences yes. as well as the practicality uh, in the uh, rainforest? Yes. So, Nadesha, so, when it comes to the Yale Oat National Park, uh, they, when there's a certain amount, there's a large amount of same species, there's a competition for food. That's the real scenario. So even for the leopards itself, they have their own competition from their same species. They do compete because like when you are looking at the prey materials, they have a wide range of prey materials. They eat from mice to samba, that's a case. And looking at Yal itself, yes, that's true. They have a competition, but they respect each other sometimes. We observe that even from like they are, even though they are, they are highly territorial when you are Looking at two dominant males, they do go away when they meet face to face. That's nature. That's how they behave. Unlike humans, they are respect to each other. It's a common case. Okay, okay. we can yes, move. Sure. Uh, so, Nadesha, okay. when you so, move into the move habitat. habitat, Sri Lankan leopard does, does have a huge variety, variety of habitat. Of habitat. They, are they, they are living from sand dunes, from, dunes, from, from Yala. Yala. They are living in central highlands in the mountain forest areas. They live in Singharaj, they live in northern areas, where are these scrub forests and such. And oh, we can observe them in all three climate zones. We have three climate zones in the country. We have the wet zone, we have the intermediate zone, as well as we have the wet zone. So you can observe leopards in all three climate landscapes in the country. And usually you can observe the, them in dry uh, evergreen forest. 
or in the scrub forest or the rainforest or even in uh, upper central highland central areas. Highland areas. We have, we have peak, peak wilderness, peak you have, have, you have, have national park, park and such. There are lepers remaining in the wild. And unfortunately, you can observe lepers in unprotected areas as well. They just live in eucalyptus plantations when you come to central highlands. You can have them in tea states, in other plantations. And sometimes we have reports that lepers are being seen in home gardens as well. So when so it comes, when it to, comes that to that actually, fact, actually it's a, it's danger. a danger for those people who are living in borders. Of course, in news we usually hear uh, families are being attacked by wild elephants. But, but we, like, we uh, yeah. never hear about leopard attacks. So are there any hidden uh, I mean, uh, catastrophes that are occurring? Uh, yes, Nadesha. There are some cases where humans get attacked by leopards. But in the case itself, lepers usually they avoid humans. They are afraid of humans, and like I said, they wanted to live in solitary, uh, and they are highly elusive. So usually, what they say that when when a human came to a forest or something like that, leopard usually avoid them. He goes away to another place yes. where they are him safe, 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 but when comes to the home, the home cases or cases, there are certain areas where leopards lack their natural prey materials. So they came in for home guns or to a remote area for the, the places where humans live to take out prey like goats, dogs, even cattle. So on on these cattle conflict or even when you are attacking a dog or something like that, people mistakenly understand that leopard is an enemy. So what animal want is that they need food to survive and unfortunately the incidents happen and sometimes they attack but like a leopard does not attack human intention they does not they never that's, that's a, a very, very important fact for me yes, as yes, well as to yes, the audience yes, so we know that it's actually yeah, uh, because, quite harmless but, but let us not trigger a leopard yeah uh, so yeah, we have an interesting slide here Nadisha, when you are looking at the screen, you can see four photographs of leopard captured by uh, Mindaka Mahela. Uh, the one leopard is reported from Bilpatu, another one is from Yale, another one is from Kumana, as well as another one in from the Misty, the Misty Forest we called the Horn Plains National Park. When you are looking at the Horn Plains National Parks, they look fluffier because of the weather. And when you are moving into the Yale and Kumana, you can see that they have the thorny light yellowish color skin as well as to the Vilkpatu. Vilkpatu is a different forest. It has a thick canopy as well as it has these grasslands as well. And it has our own color, the unique color of lepers as well. And so, like I said, leopard, even though leopard is the apex in the country, he does have three small brothers. He have another three small cat species remaining in the wild. We have the rusty spotted cat. The Russian spotted cat identified as the world's smallest, smallest wild cat, cat. species in the world. So, uh, a bit of a curiosity. So, this rustic cat, how it differs from the domestic cat? Yes, Nadisha. Uh, when we are looking at the Russian spotted cat, oh, in Singhala, it's called Koladivia, uh, and in Tamil, it's called Kitukone. Uh, the Russian spotted cat usually. Uh, won't see much of uh, interactions with humans. He does live in the wild counterparts. And uh, so to be speak, uh, your, to your question, Rashi spotted cat has this golden orange mixed skin and he has very unique stripes. From these characteristics, you can identify whether it's a common cat or the fairly scatters that you have on your own or whether it's a rusty spotted cat or a, uh, another wild cat species. Okay, that's interesting. Yes, yes. Now, this, uh, we have another one called uh, the jungle cat, also in Singhala. We call it Walbalala or the Kalabalala. Uh, you can observe that uh, wild cat species in Udawalwa National Park and it's found in the dry zone counterparts, uh, dry, zone for, for, dry zone forest. You can see, you can observe these wild cat species, and the last and the common one is the fishing cat. 
believe me you can find fishing cats in nugegoda as well really yeah. really yes how can we okay. identify, identify actually yes so, uh, like very interesting facts yes, and uh, everyone who is at this session so let's see how we can identify this cat yes so thank to ska or the organization called small cat advocacy and research they have been doing so much for the urban fishing so we have fishing cats in nugegoda we have fishing cats reported from kalambu uh, urban areas and when it come to identifying a fishing cat you it has a gray skin as well as the very lo long stripes it has a small protect as a, a small spot as well and usually it grows as in not like a leopard but then again it makes a certain noise where he usually do does it to chase the other animals especially the even our dog sometimes even it, it tries to chase away the humans as well and you can also observe them in the uh, wetlands in and around kalambu suburbs that's, that's a, a very, very interesting, interesting fact i never knew we can uh, let's see uh, in around nugegoda or in uh, uh, kalambu sorry so nadisha uh, moving on from the three species that, that we, we have by five species the common behaviors for the all subspecies are like that you have this skin color variations you have the darkish skin like i said you have the tawny yellow you have the golden skin you have the melanistic forms the black leopards and like that and usually these uh, skin patterns they differ from dry zone to wet zone and uh, in colder climates they differ to grow a fur it's a very long fur it covers them from the cold weather and they have a thick oil skin and, and usually, usually in leopard males are larger than the females uh, uh, quick, quick question mrs hatil like we see uh, yeah. we see leopard half leopards we see uh, their skin as very fragile so how do they live in the wild i mean for us we seem those are uh, tigers leopards are uh, as very they have a very thin though they are skin is thick but then they they just run down up uh, very fast in the wild so how is their skin like getting adjusted yes, to understand. the wild life so like i said they has a unique bone structure uh, they tend to go to ail where to control their speed as well as well as to the to control, control their edge it help them to climb up to a tree or to jump to a certain extent like that and uh, when it come to the skin to survive in the wild it brings them the camouflage skin uh, it's a very unique characteristic for leopard the skin itself generates a camouflage facility for leopard to stalk or to hunt other animals and to survive in the wild and uh, like i said in the previously they are really highly territorial uh, and the highly territorial animals and adults only associate uh, during the mating season and females continue to interact with their cubs even after they born for a certain uh, time period and uh, they have this white spot on their, on their uh, back, of back of their ear it helps them to communicate in between uh, the females as well as in between the males and they produce several vocalizations if you are uh, looking at leopard vocalization they do growl they howl they even purr like cat so uh, basically that is their method of communication is it just like we have our words they do have signals yes anisha they do signal each other uh, they have their own set of communication uh, communications so like i said when you are growling that means a leopard or either engaging with a prey or it try to threaten away animal like that the, there are so many uh, communication patterns identified in between leopard sub species and uh, males occupy territories they usually does and they are dominant of their canopy uh, but they do share their land with several females uh, and depends on the acute sense of hearing and eyesight they are they became the excellent hunters in the wild and uh, when for the territorial marking they do scratch 
they do create scratch marks in the trees and they usually drop around scats to uh, say that it's either his or her territory or they urinate to chase away other leopards or to identify that they are territory to mark their territory and uh, they usually uh, put up the claw marks in the trees like i said and they usually growl or howl in the forest level to uh, acknowledge other animals that there is a leopard living or there is a leopard ne nearby. So, leopard is an skilled hunter, like I said, Nadisha. And it's a very opportunistic hunt as well. When you're looking at uh, a herd of deer that they live near a walking stream or something like that, there's always a leopard nearby to take away the prey. That's they are very opportunistic. They wait till the moment where deer or the prey lost his sight or the protected timing. Usually there are in, in, in certain cases, deers they do have a protector. They look out to each other. Uh, when there's a leopard nearby or a certain predator nearby, they alarm each other to wave off the herd. But mm, there's a time where the alarm got distracted and that's the opportunity movement for the leopard. They got engaged. Usually they take out the prey like that. They yeah. either kill, kill by, by an ambush, by, by an ambush, or they do stalk it for an hour. And it has a shift kill tactics, and we call it strangulation or the suffocation. Uh, usually, they use their claws to take away the prey, to take it down, and they use their canines or the teeth to break out the neck in order to do the strangulation and to take out the prey in a very quick time. They have these two claws, claws and it and it rendered the prey almost useless. And uh, usually, usually they are the bite goes directly at the nape of the prey's throat or to the neck. And leopards have been known to carry carcasses weighing even more than 100 kilos, even more than their own weight. They have the capacity to take it out to the trees itself. And uh, like I said, even though leopard is a 35 kilo to 55 kilo sometimes, they can carry out even more than that. They have this capacity, their strength, the massive strength. And that's the beauty of a leopard to be survived in wild. Uh, and, and leopards are very fast. Like I said, they can run up to 58 kilometers per hour and they can leap into 20 feet on the ground and they can feed 10 feet higher in the ground to take out a bird sometime. So, so even birds, birds are being are being yes. hunted by leopards. Yes, that's yes, an interesting fact. There are, there are observations made by, by many environmentalists or conservationists where yeah. leopards are being attacked uh, birds to take as their prey. They usually attack herons and other uh, wild bird species and uh, they feed on it like it's a, it's a very quick manner like leopard can be engaged in seconds it, it it doesn't take much of the time leopard to attack or to engage in with their prey and it can approach as close as 13 feet without detecting detecting to their prey they use their skin as kind of touch material to stock up their prey and they can get very closer to a prey to a certain distance and like i said in the previous slide leopards doesn't much listen leopards they do have their prey types but then again the success rate for to take out a prey is a 25 percent in the wild they stays in hunger for weeks sometimes from three to four weeks that's why they always go for the biggest prey that they can be taken that's a yes. very uh, interesting fact. And Nadesha, when, when you are moving into the Sri Lankan leopard and their prey materials or the prey species, we have identified several unique species that leopards have been feeding on. One is the wild boar, the grey langa, the spotted deer or the cheetah or the samba. And in some cases, they even feed on porcupines, even though they, yes, even uh, porcupines, like, like, I thought porcupines can protect themselves from the horns that they have. I'm a bit curious, how do uh, leopards consume a porcupine? Yes, Nadesha, when porcupines, they have these horns or the spikes on their back. But their head is 
out. It usually happens. It has to be moved out. Yes. It can't be eaten in, in, in a quick manner. So, like I said, leopard is a very opportunistic hunter. It takes the opportunity and it takes out the head of the porcupine by strangulation. So, it ends his game and he takes out the prey like that. And, and like I said, they they never kill animals unintentionally. It's for an intentional manner to take it as a prey or it count it as a threat. Leopard has to be survived. It has its own threat sometimes in the wild. So sometimes it kills animal, even count it as a threat or count it as a prey. Other than that, it won't kill an another animal unintentionally. They go along, they live in a separate distance. Like in the picture itself, if, if you can see, there's a group of uh, herd of deers and leopard is just moving around. It doesn't matter whether they are saying deers are nearby the leopard or just that. It just keeps the deers apart. They live their life and leopards go with his life. That's it. No, 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 no harm at all. At all. And like I said, they have the competition. They are apex, but to be honest, they have the competition as well. The most of the competition comes from the jackal or the fox. In a, when it comes to Sri Lanka, we doesn't have fox, but people call it Naria or the fox. But what we have is jackal. We have the hivala. Mm. And when it comes to the wild, you have the sloth bear as well as the two crocodile species, the saltwater crocodile or the mugger crocodile. And these three animal the species, species are, are the competition for the leopard, the wild. And Nadisha, the interest, very interesting part is the leopard reproduction or the leopard cubs. I know you adore leopard cubs. Yes. And yes, yes. everyone does. So there, there's no certain period for them to mate. It usually happens during the raining season, uh, but it happens throughout the year. And once mating has been occurred, uh, the mother leopard uh, keep her fetus uh, for 90 to 100 days in her belly and she does everything to protect herself during that period and uh, when they've been born they usually born in a den or in a cave and the mother leopard can be highly protected it usually attacks other territorial males as well to wave away uh, the female from her cubs and uh, she can have up to four at a time but it depends on the size of the litter and Nadisha, the survival rate for the infants or the young leopard cubs are 50% from one month to six months. 50%? Yes, yeah. yes so it's like a 50 percentage is very low. Yes, it's kind of a, like picking a toss. Uh, it's 50% and after six months, from, from six to ten months, the mother the teaches mother them how to hunt. hunt. And oh, about oh, oh. ten months old, the cubs have been learned how to hunt or to how to survive, so therefore they used to explore their habitat. But of like they attach to their mother from one to two years, from 18 to 24 months, and therefore she feeds them, uh, the, they, she teaches them, and after two years, the cubs uh, are departing from the mother and they find their own territories. And the studies that we we been conducted showed that maternal bond is very strong in between the cubs and between the mother. So, like you said, uh, survival is a must for the leopard. They have their own skills. When you are moving to the screen itself, you can see a leopard stalking to their prey. It, uh, it can be uh, getting to the ground as close as like three to four inches sometimes. It can be that much closer to the ground when it comes to the stalking. And they are excellent climbers. They can climb any height and they can drag up their prey up to the trees like I said when you come to the African or the Indian counterparts and uh, even they can jump in between the tree branches as well. Wow, wow. That, that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Nadisha like this is sex, this is something people ask me every time. Have you seen a panther? Yes I do. If you are, if I am recalling my memory to the year 2020 uh, before the media entered to the scene. We observed the lost panther in year 2016 in the Nallathani area. And uh, 
but we kept our mouth shut we gathered the information we kept it to ourselves and unfortunately uh, it went south ways and the leopard got killed uh, and there are several cases where we had these carcasses or the dead uh, uh, animal death or the leopard death the pet death uh, in the island we had one from singaraja uh, from uh, and from nallathania as well so when it comes to singaraja it has a very unique characteristic for a forest and we believe that uh, in certain places in singaraja we have black panthers uh, or the black leopards uh, but yeah. when you are moving to india or to the other countries there is a huge population of black leopards especially when it comes to the uh, javan leopard they have their own black leopard skin variant they are the estimated amount is around like 400 to 500 black leopards remaining in the javan forest at the moment interesting yes at any other this especially other so you ask me that do leopards attack humans or they, yes. they like uh, they, but madisha they uh, usually but madisha they i have several uh, encounters with leopard up close one i had around like 10 to 16 meters up close at one time uh, what happened was that i was confused the leopard was confused <laughs> and uh, before i react the leopard reacted it went away it won't face another human uh, but if you act as a threat or if you does that that triggered leopard sometimes they might attack you because that like, they will take your action as a threat so i think it's better for us to let the leopard to be as it is as if you if you ever in the leopard face to face let the leopard go you can go your very ways just don't engage or just don't make any sudden moves and you can see leopard like i said you can see leopards in home guns as well there are several cases in the country like i said uh, all these attacks was created by humans because they reacted first not the leopard yeah. so that's the thing so if we come to see a leopard at a safari or even just in case if you happen to see a leopard in your home garden just don't react stay still yes. so leopards are quite harmless yes. that's a very good yeah. fact to get yes. to know so nadesha we are coming into an our presentation uh, or for discussion. discussion so oh, why, why leopards are important uh, leopards they do balance our ecosystem they are the apex predator uh, we call them as uh, a flagship species a fact that this species is known as a species where every other wild species or the every other wild animal can live under them they they do reforest forest as well by the ice cache when they are taking out a samba or other animal uh, they can take out the seeds from the plants as the uh, as the ice cache and they drop it out in the wild uh, similar to the leopard and uh, leopard helps mitigate the interspecies conflicts or they balance out the population of deer or the samba or other herbivorous species uh, and that's why leopards are important leopards are important for various cases but in simple terms we need leopards okay so how can society help to mitigate the leopard you can always spread awareness like this that's the best part you can educate people who are nearby who live near by forest or who has a conflict in between wild animals and you can assist conservation organizations even you can join lepacon uh, and you can always practice on better agricultural methods and you can have proper land management and you can always say no to bush meat or to the dadamas it's a very common case in sri lanka when it comes to the uh dry zone parts and it does it does kill leopards as well by because when you are going to the bush meat all these bush meat coming from snaring incidents and leopards got entangled to these snares as well and they get killed so we have to protect our population uh so to speak nadesha so i think uh, the better message that we can give us to our young sir is that uh, apart from leopards we have to protect our nature uh, we live or not we want it uh, we are the ones who surviving the nature nature is not surviving on us she is not depending on us 
and we are the one who's depending and i think one day we will be go and worship nature instead of religious the religious being at even in the covid pandemic exactly. yes exactly. yes so those are very interesting um and if you have any questions you can uh, raise your hands and uh, we will give an opportunity for you all to unmute yourself and you yourself can uh, uh compute with uh, mr satil and he will answer all your questions let's see whether we are getting any questions i can see a raise of hands okay so, can i ask my question now yes uh we have a very question mrs satil uh Senut, so Senut, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can uh, speak to Mr. Satil. Okay. Um, excuse me, Mr. Satil. Like, uh, what are the chances of a black panther being born? Just per se. Uh, so, what are the chances of a black panther to be born? Uh, the chances are twenty-five percent. Uh, that's the case. When it comes to the wild, uh, both mother uh, mother carries the DNA to generate a black leopard uh, in most cases. And uh, when it comes to the wild self, it's applicable for the wild as well. When it comes, speaking about the uh, captive animals, you can have uh, 50 to 75 percent of the chances when you are breeding in captivity. But then again, to the wild, it's 25 percent. And uh, if you have both mother and the leopardess or the uh, or the male leopard uh, if they are both black or both melanistic you can have a certain black panther cub if not if the father is He's a normal variation or the father is a black variation uh, but mother is a normal variation uh, you might have no luck finding a leopard cub uh, with black fur but if you have a mother with black fur and a father with normal color variations there are cases sometimes there are 25% of a chance that you can be get, you can get a black leopard born in the wild uh, yes mrs satish so, so we have got uh, some more questions uh, with us why, why do, do homo sapiens kill leopards why do white man kill leopards yes white man kill leopards because of fear because uh, when it come to the human presence or when 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 a, when a leopard uh, came into the human presence or the human landscape the uh, human take them as a threat uh, like because we created this unwanted fear among the society uh, we say that leopard is a killer or a man eater or like that but then again unfortunately uh, leopards are not and therefore people do kill them for beer as well as to protect their uh, wild, wild livestock even the cattle or uh, the dog even sometimes we all love our pets sometimes in certain cases they do kill their pets to protect their livestock as well as their pets as well so uh, these are the scenes where humans killed leopard in the uh, human areas okay so if uh anyone is interested you can directly communicate to mr sethil uh, just have a raise of hands we will unmute yourselves yes uh, chanut chanut you can unmute yourself and you can talk to mr sethil chanula chanula i'm sorry chanula are you there Chanula, you could unmute yourself. Uh, 
Chanula. Descendu. Descendu. You can see a raise of hand from you. You can unmute yourself and talk to us. Excuse me, sir. Do leopards kill other leopards? So he's asking whether do leopards kill other leopards? Uh, yes, sometimes they does because uh, leopards need to have their own territory and uh, there are territorial fights happening in between the same species. Uh, in that case, uh, leopards they do uh, fight each other to keep his or her territory. So therefore, leopards got killed from another leopard in some cases as well. Uh, that's the only and as well as uh, when you are moving into the uh, leopard cubs or when you are doing uh, moving into the reproduction uh, sometimes there are cases that male leopards killed other uh, leopard cubs in order to uh, put out the survival rate or put out to the competition out of the game so these are the cases where leopards kill each other so we have some interesting questions mr sethil yes, kirunada in here is asking why do they really hold their kills into trees? Yes, why do they take their prey or the kills into the trees? Because to avoid the competition or the other predators, to wave over the other predators. When you are looking at uh, tigers or the, the stripped one, ones in live in India, they can't climb trees. And there are certain species like there are a competition where you can they, they can't climb a tree and taking that advantage leopard taking their prey into the trees in order to to feast on it and like when you are moving into the bears uh, when you are moving into the crocodiles or to the jackals they can't climb trees but uh, to the leopard it's an easy game they took their prey upon onto the tree and they put it up for the days and they feed on it all right so I hope uh, the question is clear. And another interesting question from Madisa. Do they hunt jackals? Do leopards hunt jackals? Uh, yes, so yes, Madisa, there are certain case reported, not from Sri Lanka, uh, but from other places where from India uh, or even in from African uh, counterparts. We have reported, uh, we have reports that uh, leopards claim jackals, but uh, not as a prey material, but to put out their competition uh, out from the game. Because like uh, when leopard has taken a prey or something like that, jackals usually they come to feast on it. And uh, sometimes leopards try to chase it away. But then again, if the game changes an another, leopards take it out. And it kills the jackal uh, instantly to uh, secure his prey type. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Setil. And we are here. Uh, there's a raise of hand. You can unmute yourself and communicate to Mr. Setil. Vihanga, are you there? You can unmute yourself, Vihanga. Teacher, uh, my main question is yeah. that well, why do uh, well why do they kill animals? Why do humans uh, homo sapiens kill animals mainly. What are the number of reasons? I also have a question yes. concerning about. I also yes, have a we have the, so uh, humans kill other animals for various reasons. One to take them as a food material. Uh, one, uh, they are fear. Uh, they have own, they have their own fear. When it comes to the crocodiles or to the snakes. People fear snakes most of the time, and they usually kill these animals. And uh, like that, more like in most cases, it's the fear actually, because people doesn't have much of the environmental literacy or the uh, understanding about the animals or about their behaviors. So uh, they take it as a threat, and they do kill uh, other animals in order to protect themselves. That's what human does most of the time. Sir, uh, I also right. have another question. And we uh, have Devin. Devin? Devin, you can unmute yourself and you can ask your questions from Mrs. Ethel. Uh, actually, if there is a leopard in our in your house garden, uh, what do we have to do? 
uh, yes so if you have have a presence of a leopard in your home garden or in your area what you can do is that you can seek help from the department of wild department of wildlife conservation or you can alert your local uh, police authority to get help uh, but keep in keep in your mind that please don't engage with another, with other wild animals in order to protect yourself because you are putting yourself in harm as well as the animals life as well so it's better to uh, alert the responsible authorities in order to get it out from your home garden or to secure yourself. All right, so we have Ryan in here. Ryan, you can unmute yourself. Uh, how can leopards come to our gar home garden without noticing? Without, without us noticing? Yes, so uh, what leopard does is that leopard usually they roam at night, sometimes in day, even in daytime as well. But in most cases where we found that leopards are living in home gardens or certain places, that what they do is that they do their moving during night time so that people are sleeping or people are engaging in other work. They usually stay at home and leopard has this all the free space in order to roam here and there. So therefore, uh, leopards can be moved without uh, seeing them to the human eye. Alright, so Mihin, Mihin, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, your question from Mr. Satil. Uh, Sir so Satil, I wanted to ask now, uh, if we are uh, stuck in a jungle, uh, where we have leopard near us, I think we have experienced that. But also, I will keep... Yes, so... Uh... If you ever get in, got engaged by a leopard or a certain wild animal in the wild self, I have so many experience when it comes to the wild expeditions and like that. What you should do is that you should never go uh, and face it uh, like you should not engage with leopard uh, because the, there are a few reasons like like us, like us humans, leopards, they can get fear because they love their life as well they wanted to survive and therefore uh, they usually try to attack if they take you as a threat so don't be the threat in your scenario uh, be the person who take a take a uh, take your leg back and uh, put the leopard's life up front uh, let it go and you can go your own way uh, you but usually most of the cases wild animals they usually avoid human presence in the wild all right, so I hope uh, you got the answer for your question. And we have Ditna Disanayaka with us. Ditna, you can unmute yourself. My question is, are panthers more dangerous than leopards? So yes, uh, both panthers are leopards. Both are the same species. They only differ from the color. Uh, they are not like, but in certain cases, people say that le or black panthers or the panthers, black leopards, they are very ferocious. Uh, they have their highly predatorial skills and like that. But then again, when you are speaking in a scientific manner, you're speaking about from the, uh, not from the theories, but from the experience, uh, both are same. Uh, they both have the, these unique characteristics as a top predator uh, in the country. So we have another interesting question. Is there any chance to meet a leopard around worlds and in Horton Plains? Uh, yes, Nadisha. When you are moving into the Horton Plains, you have this trail called World's End. And uh, there are our chances, uh, especially when you are started your journey around 6 in the morning or even in the after. Uh, after lunch or like that, uh, usually uh, you can observe these uh, leopard interactions or their movements uh, in and out in the mountains, uh, in the two separate sections of the trail itself. So if you are lucky enough or if you have good eyesight, you can surely, you can sure see a leopard in the Horton Plains itself because Horton Plains has these tall grasses and it, it provides the camouflage for the leopard. Uh, and like I said, if you are lucky, then you can, sure, definitely you can have one. Okay. 
that's very interesting. So next time when we go to Horton Plains, we'll see whether we will be getting to see a leopard. So we have Ansali Bulatgama. Ansali, you can unmute yourself. So, so how can we help leopards? How can I help leopards as a child? Yes, uh, I think what you are meaning is that how you can help protect leopards in the wild. So uh, you can help by uh, informing about that leopards are not harmful. Uh, they have their own life. They have their own set of skills to survive in the wild. They are struggling like that. You can create craze awareness among your friends as well as among your family uh, and among your society and you can help authorities by providing about the information related to wildlife crimes and uh, you can actively engage in wildlife conservation by joining other conservation organizations in the country including the leper Corps. okay so uh, actually uh, quite unfortunately we are running out of time but uh, we will give one more chance to uh, dulin fernando you can unmute yourself It's too late. Tulane, are you there? Yes, teacher. Yes, Tulane, you can ask uh, your question. Teacher, my question is, if a male leopard meets a lion, what will the action, will make the action first? So, if a male leopard meets a lion, what will be the action? Yes, if a male leopard meets a lion, what will it be? Uh, it will be like that. There are certain cases they can be compete to keep their territory or to survive. Uh, they will fight or more, in most cases they avoid each other and uh, they probably go in their merry ways in order to avoid such a fight. That's the uh, two main uh, things that can be happen if you are if a leopard meeting a lion in the wild, but in not in Sri Lanka, but in African counterparts, uh, we had certain cases where they've been fighting each other and they had their very like these territorial fights and such things to wave off the prey materials or to take out uh, their prey from to uh, feed on it as their own. Uh, but then again, in most cases. Uh, they will uh, go uh, avoid each other in the most of the time. All right, Mrs. Satil. So uh, quite unfortunately, we have uh, many ways of hands, but since we are coming to the end of our session, uh, quite unfortunately, we cannot give any more chances. But do not get disheartened because this is just one episode of Endangered. There will be a series of more episodes with uh, Mrs. Satil. So uh, on the long way, you will be getting more chances to speak to Mrs. Sethil. And Mrs. Sethil, I take this an opportunity to thank you for being uh, in here to enlighten us with these interesting and amazing facts because I myself, I, I thought I knew about leopards, but I never knew about the hidden facts. So it is uh, actually a pleasure to have you with us today. Mm, and uh, I thank everyone in here who have uh, joined with us. So um, this is a very uh, entertaining and an interesting session and we look forward to bringing you a series of exciting webinars in partnership with Mr. Settle in the near future. And at Lyceum International Schools, we always encourage our students to think out of the frame and we encourage our students to chase their dreams. So. Stay tuned for more upcoming episodes, very interesting episodes from this season, Endangered. Thank you so much.